Okay, so the next step, how I told you, now we need to do some modification and see. But first I want you to look on LST file. LST file, it's list file. Let's open it with F3. And uh, it's telling you what happens during your structure refinement. It's giving you all the parameters on each cycle, so you can look at it if you forgot something. But what you need to find is this uh, table, which called uh, which called principal mean square atomic displacement use. So if something wrong with your thermal parameters or ellipsoid parameters of your atoms, these uh, will tell you right here. So it says non positive defined or may be split it or something like that. If you see something like that, then something wrong. It's uh, it's very bad. But in our case, everything looks good. So we absolutely fine with that. Okay. So the next thing, what I would like to do, maybe repeat one more refinement cycle. Yes. Um, how many? Yeah, let's do one more time refinement, Excel. So look like our refinement going well. Um, the next thing, what you would prefer to do since you finally found your model, let's review it. Let's see what happens with it. So let's do a small for now less dollar Q and see our structure look like. So it looks very good. Now let's see thermal parameters for the atoms. So you type in info. So you can see our thermal parameters quite good. Our hydrogen thermal parameters are also small. That's what you would expect. Um, so everything for now everything looks good. Uh, the next thing uh, what I would like to do um, for crystal structure publication, you would like to rename all the atoms because obviously right now if you type Roach, our atomic name it's absolutely out of order. So you would always prefer to have some kind of um, order. Uh, in atoms, so you can easily um, uh, would uh, so you would easily uh, how to say you would easily to uh, refer to the atoms uh, in your molecule, and you would understand uh, where is this uh, particular atom is located. So. Well, I oriented it in some position where I can see all the atoms. If you put all labels, I can easily see all atoms. And they, maybe it's funny position, you can see actually geometry, but you can read all the labels of atoms. So the next thing, uh, what you want to do, it's to rename your atoms. To do so, um, it's the best thing, um, it's to write... Uh, on your paper uh, structure and name it there how you want to name it and after that put it here mm, to do that we have common pick and common pick will allow you to uh, rename the atoms delete the atoms or um, or uh, to see where its uh, particular atom is located. So, well, let's start with peak, and let's start with peak um, uh, dollar carbons because oxygens we already done. So, if you type peak dollar carbon, it will uh, rename only carbon atoms, and you can see. It's flashing you one of the carbon atoms and telling you how should I rename it. Well, um, what I'm thinking how we can rename it is uh, going from O1 uh, or going, for example, from C12 would be my C1, C17 would be my C2 um, and so on. So I will name the main chain 
and it will be C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, C9, C... So it would be um, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, C9, C10, C11, C12, C13, uh, C14, C and C18 will be C15. Fifteen, okay. So that would be my C two. That would be my C sixteen. It's already C sixteen. Okay, that would be my C two, C three, C four, C five, C six, C seven, C eight. Eight, C nine, C ten, C eleven, C twelve, C thirteen, okay, so it will be C eight, C nine, that would be C one, nine, ten, eleven, so it's already C eleven. C8, uh, so this would be C7. Uh, this would be C14. This will be C3. So be C4. C5. C12. Uh, that would be C6. That would be C10. Okay. Look like we name uh, all our carbons. Um, so we done with carbons. Now we supposed to name hydrogens. So peak dollar H. How I name hydrogens? Well, I name hydrogens the same as a carbon atom but if you have two hydrogens for ca one carbon atom you give it uh, A and B so this one uh, uh, C16 contain two hydrogens so uh, name first hydrogen as H16B and the next one will be A I always start this and so this one will be H12 H7 H14 that would be H15 B H9 H6 H1 H2 H8 and this would be H16A H3 H5 and this would be H15A uh, this would be H13 and I think uh, H10, yes, H10. Too bad that it doesn't show you the labels uh, for hydrogen, so it's make uh, a little bit harder to name hydrogens we speak, but it's still quite easy. So uh, you done? So press enter, and let's check our numbering scene. Maybe we did some errors in the numbering. Let's say all labels and let's look. No, look like we absolutely fine. Yes, uh, so all our carbon and hydrogens are labeled. Okay, let's go escape from here. Um, let's type info. So, and in info, you clearly can see that right now our atomic list doesn't have any order. Well, to do so, to have an order. What you need to do is 
uh, to sort those atoms. For that, you need to type sort, enter. And after that, you type in sort dollar oxygens, dollar carbons. What does it mean? It's you taking the elements uh, which is, uh, have the highest number in periodic table and arrange them in the line. I and in all honesty, I prefer to put my carbons, uh, hydrogen, the, uh, the last ones. Okay, so if you press enter, the info, you can see it. And program uh, automatically, if you do such stuff, program automatically will arrange your hydrogens, which correspond to particular carbon, to be right after this high, uh, right after this carbon, which is quite nice. Uh, which is really quite, uh, which is really quite nice. So, you sort your atom, you make your atomic list look nice. So, what you do next, you do file, deals, and let's repeat the refinement. Okay, uh, that is our first step for the preparation. Uh, for publication and right now you can see our shifts is come down to zero um, which is quite nice okay